And another way we can keep our project organized is using markers and regions. And these let us specify a particular point or area in a timeline that we can easily go back to later on. So for example, let's go ahead and grab another piece of video. This time we'll use park cycling. We'll stay with the cycling theme. I could drop it in any number of places now because we have multiple tracks. But to keep things organized, I'm going to drop it on my main video track. And you'll see the audio is following along with it. Okay, so we don't really need to hear the audio while we're doing this, so I'll mute it. And let's just go through here. And let's say, you know what, later on I need to put a cutaway shot here, or for some other reason I want to define this particular point in the shot where this guy's back wheel just touches the end of the frame. We're going to home in on that. Okay, so now let's hit the M key for marker. And you see we have an orange marker, and it's waiting for us to type in a name. Now, you don't have to put a name in. If you don't want to, just hit the Enter or the Return key, and you'll just have a marker there. Or we can choose to put a name in. We can say Blue Jersey, and just leave that mark. Let's put in another marker or two. Let's say, okay, this part on the road where you've got the stenciling on the road there, I'm going to hit M, stencil, and you'll notice also that as the markers are going in, they're numbered. So the first marker is number one, the second marker is two, so what number is this marker going to be? One and a half? Nope, it's just going to go full increments and it's going to be marker number three. Let's just call this three. The cool thing about markers is, is that no matter what we do on a timeline, we could always find that spot again. And remember, the marker is anchored to the spot on the timeline at a certain time, not to the media. So if we move events on a timeline, even though the markers were created with the event in mind, the markers aren't going to move unless we use Ripple. So I'm going to turn Ignore Event Grouping off. Let's move this down. And now I'm going to do a post ripple, Control shift f And sure enough, those markers move in relation to it. Something else that's really handy with the markers is that we can jump directly to them using the numbers at the top of the keyboard. So if you hit 1, it's going to jump to marker 1. 2 jumps to marker 2, etc., etc. Now we get 99 of these that are numbered. You can still put markers in after that number, but you just won't be able to jump right to them using the keyboard. So one of the things that markers will do for us is that they're place keepers to come back to a place of interest. And that's why we put the marker there. Another reason is that later on, if we're going to make a DVD out of this, the markers can serve as the chapter stops for us. And we're going to see that later when we do some rendering. Now, as you've seen, markers define one particular point on the timeline. What if, just like a time selection, we want to define both an in and out point and basically define a duration and time at a certain place? Well, those are regions, and they work pretty much the same way as markers, except we're going to hit R. And this time, I'm just going to enter it without a name. And the regions will count toward the numbering system that we're using with the markers. So it's taken on number four, and it will work the same way that we can jump right to it. So I'll hit one here, I'll hit four, and you can see that it jumps right to the region. Once you put in a marker or a region, you can adjust them just by clicking and dragging. And that goes for regions as well. And if you want to make a selection that's exactly that region, just double click, and there you have it. If you want to make a selection between two markers, you can do that. And if you want to move back and forth in your timeline from marker to marker, use the control and arrow keys. In the case of the region, it's going to go first to the in point and then to the out point. And the main way I like to use regions is actually leave notes for myself, or if I'm working with somebody else who's also going to be working on the project, what I do is define an area. Let's say that needs some work. Right click and rename. And I might leave a note that says, fix the color. 
And as I'm working through the project, I'll leave the notes. And then when it comes time to finalize everything and just region by region, look at all the notes. And as I fix each one, I delete. And then when there's no more regions, I know all the fixes have been done. And so far you've seen that the markers and regions live on the timeline itself, not on a particular event, but there is a way for us to do that. And we do that using the trimmer. So let's open the same clip in the trimmer. Right click, open and trimmer. Let's just put in a few random markers. Again, I'm gonna hit the M key. We'll call this orange tire. We'll call this green jersey. Let's get a good shot of the green jersey guy on the left there. I'm going to make a region. Hit the R key. Close together. And if we want these markers and regions to stay with this media, Let's go ahead and go to this floppy disk icon at Save Markers and Regions. That's going to create a little file that lives along with the media file. I'm going to move down a timeline here. Let's go ahead and drag that back in once more. And look at that. The markers and regions along with their titles are included here along with the event. Now what can we do if we want to actually transfer these markers and regions to the timeline itself? Well, in Movie Studio, you're going to have to do it manually by clicking and creating it all over again. If you have Vegas Pro, you have an easier option. Let's take the same file. And remember, since we save those markers and regions, we expect to see them show up again. And sure enough, there they are. And so first, let's select the event here. Then we'll go to Tools, Scripting. Promote Media Markers. That could be really handy at times. Another way I like to use markers is that if I'm going to do a bunch of operations and I'm not sure I'm really going to be happy with the results and I might want to come back to the state the project is in before I start fooling around, I might just drop a marker in. So let's say marker 5 is right there, just in a random spot really. I'm going to start moving things around and oh that's starting to get ugly and this can be going on for a while and I say you know what that's not really gonna work out let's just take it back so let's use control Z one of our favorite functions here and instead of really trying to keep track of exactly how many things I did or keep a really careful eye on what's happening we can now just control Z until the marker pops off right there and now we know it's returned to exactly the state it was right when that marker was added.